Hi everyone, welcome back to the final video of the HVAC comp for the semester. I want to wrap up our discussion on the discounted cash flow valuation and tie it all together with what we started over the last few videos. So in our last video, we talked about projecting future revenues and converting from revenue to free cash flow. This requires an understanding of costs and capital requirements as you're going to have to model out changes in networking capital, capital expenditures, and you have to finish out your build of the entire income for most of the income statement. In the video before that, we looked at some of the key building blocks and the conceptual ideas behind the weighted average cost of capital and discounting. Now we want to discount and apply that whack in our concept of an Excel model here in order to figure out um, our terminal and enterprise values for our company in the future. Now, before I go on, I just want to provide one key DCF caveat is that you tend to need positive free cash flow. In the context of the HVAC comp, it's a lot easier to make a DCF if you have positive free cash flow. So let's quickly recap what we saw in the last video. Remember, we need to start with a revenue projection model, which details the forecast um, which determines the revenues of the company. You want to make sure you are capturing the fundamental drivers of the business in order to capture, capture revenues in a quantitative form. And remember, it's art and a science together. You are making assumptions. You need to be able to justify your assumptions. And we discussed two methods of RPM, one being the bottom-up method, and then the second one being the top-down method. So both of those are applicable methods for building your RPM. So refer back to the previous video for more information on that. And let's just recap our formula to get to free cash flow, right? Free cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation and amortization minus taxes minus the net capex minus change in networking capital. So depending on the business, the depreciation and amortization can be constant. Sometimes it's best to keep it flat. Taxes, we already find our taxes when we calculate net income, so we just need to subtract it out. And net capex, right? We want to look at probably what management has stated for future capital expenditures. So let's jump back to discounting. Um, but before we can discount anything, we need to figure out the WAC or our discount rate. So this is the way I like to do a WAC in Excel. I tend to have a few different little tables here. Cost of debt, cost of equity capital structure. So the cost of debt, we're going to account for the interest expense and the outstanding debt. Um, and then you're just going to divide that 1 of 3 over that 2,262. Um, and that's going to help give you a pre-tax -co pre cost of debt there. Um, and then remember, you always have to account for the effective tax rate. For a cost of equity, you'll take the five-year treasury yield. You can just Google that to find that. Remember, we get the equity risk premium from Damodaran. Um, we find our beta, and then we find our cost of equity. Um, remember, in the two videos ago, we discussed how to figure out the cost of beta, which is the covariance over the variance. So that's the cost of equity. Then we account for the capital structure, the percentage amount of debt they have, the percentage of equity. Then we figure that out and take a weighted average to get the whack, right? So one, cost of debt, two, cost of equity, three, capital structure, four, calculate the whack. So now that we have that um, WAC, we're going to bring that WAC over into our area where we did our free cash flow here. So we notice the WAC is 6.97. Um, so what we do is we take our unlevered free cash flow. We see it's 2018 at 612. Um, 612, that's year zero. So we're going to follow our present value formula. So future value over 1 plus i to the t. So since t is zero here, that's just going to be 612 is the present value of the unlevered free cash flow. In 2019, that's year one. So you're going to take the unlevered free cash flow. So there we found 587. We're going to discount it by one year. So one plus our discount rate is 6.97%. Remember, so that's 6.97% there. So that's going to be 1.0697 on the denominator to the ones of 587 over that 1.0697. There it gives you 549. And then we just do this continuing out for the second year, third year, etc. It's normally a very good idea to use year 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And then you can just link that cell in there. So now we have the present value for unlevered free cash flow. So we pretty much did our discounting there. Um, so we have that, but there's kind of an issue. We cannot reasonably project our free cash flow past a certain point, right? So if you're looking at 10, 20 years down the future, you don't really know what Apple or any company is going to do 20 years from now. So to handle this case, we lump all the cash flows beyond the projection period together, and we call this the terminal value. So... And there are two ways we can figure this out. So one of them is the perpetual growth rate. The simplest method is to assume that a business will grow at a constant growth rate in perpetuity. So we take our, we find a growth rate. Um, we normally say something in the range of 2 to 4%. If you say 0%, um, that also works. Um, that's, again, just really building a margin of safety. So then we take the last free cash flow in our projection period and increase it by our growth rate. Then we divide the difference in WAC and growth rate, and this gives us our terminal value. So you take FCF of T, where T is our final year in our projection, so in this, this would 
in our case, this would be the fifth year, we times one plus G to figure out what that future rate is. And you divide it by the WAC minus your um, G there. So this gives us our terminal value. Now that we have a terminal value, we will go ahead and then discount our terminal value to find the net present value. So remember, we did not use, in this case here, we did not use the negative, um, we did not use our discounted free cash flows, we use our raw free cash flows. So here we'll come back, we will discount our terminal value to the net present value. So TVPV, so the terminal value's present value is this TV over one plus WAC to the T. Uh, we must add this to the sum of our projected free cash flows. So we find the sum of our pr present value free cash flows, and then we take this lump sum terminal value that we just found, and we add that together. So we take the free cash flow for your zero, one, two, three, four, and five, and then we add those are all the present values, and then we add it to the terminal value of our present value. Lastly, from this EV, this enterprise value, remember, we now found that. Um, we subtract our net debt to find our equity value, and we can divide this by the shares outstanding to find the implied share price. So let's see how this looks. So we get our long-term growth rate. So here I've assumed a 2% long-term growth rate. We have a T plus one free cash flow using this growth rate. And then I've taken that and divided it by WAC minus the growth rate to find the terminal value, which is 15,758. Then I find the present value of the terminal value, which is discount by the WAC. Um, and don't forget to be consistent with the projection period. If you projected out five years, discounted with T equaling five there. Then I add this to the sum of the present values of my free cash flows. That gives me 14,165. Now we have this TV as a percent of enterprise value. No need to worry about that. But that's just the total value, um, the terminal value as a percent of the enterprise value. That can sometimes be useful to know. But then we have our enterprise value, right, 14,165. We subtract out the net debt. Notice this is the same net debt that we use in our WAC formula. That gives us an equity value of 11,903. I divide that by the number of shares outstanding, and that gives me an equity value per share and an implied ROI. So this will give you how we go from our free cash flows, we discount our free cash flows, we find our terminal value, we discount our terminal value, we add the sum of the free cash flows to our discounted of our discounted free cash flows, add it to our discounted terminal value, we subtract out net debt, and that's how we find our equity value there, divided by the number of shares, and that gives you your equity value per share. And that's pretty much it. You've made a projection in the future of what a stock price should be worth based on the fundamental drivers of the business. If you want to have a little more fun, you can do a sensitivity table where we model out with WAC um, on the left-hand side and then the terminal growth rates on the top. So we can see that, oh, maybe we were wrong in calculating our WAC. Maybe our WAC was too low. Um, so then, but our growth rate was correct. So we'll see that we're still in the green. We're still generating an ROI. Maybe our growth rate was too low, but our WAC was correct. We'll see that we're generating still a positive ROI there. So this can help, again, provide information about a margin of safety because it's unlikely that the, that the number that we correct accurately, that we predicted previously, like to the decimal is going to be correct. So this helps to provide a little bit of a margin of safety by showing you that even if you are wrong by X percent, by several percentage points on your WAC and free cash and your terminal growth rate, or your perpetuity growth rate that you would still um, be generating a positive return and what that positive return would be. So now let's just recap our whole DCF. We start with our revenue projection. And then from our revenue projection, we will model out the rest of the income statement. And then we'll model out parts of the balance sheet. And that's going to give us our free cash flow. Remember, to get free cash flow requires our balance sheet and our income statement. Once we have our free cash flows, we take the present values of the free cash flows, and remember, we're discounting it by the WAC. The WAC is made up of two components. It's the weighted average cost of capital, and you weight it with the cost of equity and the cost of debt. Remember, to get our cost of equity is the risk-free rate, the equity risk premium, and the beta of the stock. And the cost of debt is just the average yield on the debt and the tax yield. So that gives you your WAC, and then that's the discount rate when we, pre when we find the present value of our free cash flows. Then we have the terminal value, Right? So we take the sum of all our free cash flows before we discounted them, and then we discount that sum, uh, and then we figure out, use the growth rate there to find our terminal value. Right, we, So we do take that um, terminal free cash flow, we multiply by 1 plus G divided by WAC minus G there, um, then we find the present value of that, 
over there by again discounting by our WAC with our last year, so in this case it will be t equals 5. We add that to the sum of our present values of free cash flows, so that gives us our terminal value. And then lastly, we have our equity value um, there, so we take our term, we take the sum of the present values and of the terminal value of the discount terminal value, that sum um, is our enterprise value. We just subtract out our net debt to get our equity value and you divide it by the number of shares outstanding to get an implied share price. So that's pretty much all it is in the DCF. The big chunk of the DCF really is that revenue projection and free cash flow model because that's where all the assumptions are going. Steps three, four, and five are pretty much just process steps. Like it doesn't matter what DCF you're looking at, you're gonna see these same steps everywhere. And this is provided in our template. So we highly encourage you to use the template which is gonna be posted on Google Classroom. We are providing sample DCFs and sample slides and all that's gonna be posted on Google Classroom. But this is the last video in the fall 2020 HVAC comp series. We'll see you for the stock pitch competition. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your section leaders, reach out to me, um, post on Google Classrooms. We'll be hosting office hours over the next two weeks until we hit the stock pitch competition. And we're here to answer all your questions and help you generate some really awesome stock pitches. So good luck and we'll see you at the competition. <music>